we're back out here at the Big Lake, and today we're going on an adventure. I was granted special access to a restricted part of the lake, and I'll tell you what, it was sketchy. You don't want to miss this one. Stick around. We are really, really, really... Oh, crap. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today is sort of a special episode. Rather than the normal tips and tricks that I have for you, I've got an adventure. I was granted special access to go to a special off-limits part of the lake. See, there's a part of the lake that's beyond the westernmost dam on one of the branches. And I've noticed it for years. I've never really had a chance to fish it. You can fish it from the backside of that dam. But other than that, that's pretty much complete virgin water. Now, I knew it was sketchy because whenever the lake is on drawdown, you can see that it's full of stumps. And you can also see how shallow it is. But, you know, virgin water and a pressured lake like this, I couldn't resist the opportunity. So I loaded up the little boat dropped her in the water, and started to troll around to see what I could find. And I'm telling you what, ooh, man, I don't know if I'm going to do that again. See, first and foremost, it was a windy day. And in that little plastic boat, it pushes you all around like a leaf. That was one thing. And another thing is, we were literally floating between four and six inches of water. And not only was the wind blowing in the wrong direction, pushing me out farther away from the bank, but there were unseen stumps all through there. And that water was between six, eight inches, some places even more shallow than that. And I'm telling you what, that was definitely nerve wracking. But you know, we wanna go to places where the fish are, the virgin water, it was very, very alluring. I wanted to see just exactly what kind of giant I could pull out of there. So I had a handful of rods and a handful of presentations. I figured today I would keep it pretty simple. I would stick to a spinnerbait, wacky rig, Texas rig, chatterbait, things like that. And I began to fish around. And I'm telling you what, it certainly, certainly was not easy. I'll show you what I mean. Today is an adventure day, kids. You see that? That is the northwest leg of the big lake. And there is boats all on it. I don't know if you can see that from here, but we have a special day because right here at this north side, this is where the lake ends. You can see there's an earthen dam right here that they've put up. Well, we have been granted special access to all of that. Nobody can get to that. Boats cannot get in there. This is where we are going to be fishing today. And there are some giants in here. So that's what we are going to be fishing. I've got the little boat with me and we're going to be putting in and fishing this area. This is going to be one heck of an adventure. Stick around. All right. I know there's toads in here. I know there is. The question is, is what do they want? What do those toads want? Let's see if I can make a few skips back in there. And I've got it pretty tight. I've got the settings on this pretty tight, so. Seems to be working okay. So after a while being on the water, I started to gain a little bit of confidence, started to feel like I could figure things out a little bit. The wind started to die down and the bite started to pick up. That's when we started to catch fish. We were able to start figuring out a pattern. The Texas rig and the spinnerbait, which was not a surprise. 
we had some overcast skies. We had some pretty good wind. I went with a gold bladed booyah spinner bait that had a red hook and I just put, I guess, a regular rage grub trailer on it. I turned it sideways and I just started casting it around. And as you can see here, well, we started catching some pretty good fish. Just a huge, huge pile of stumps. But there are a whole bunch of things out here that I would like to fish. Now you knew it was going to be a struggle. I mean, this is normally an off-limits area for a reason, right? But I was talking to the guy, uh, the guy who runs this place, the, uh, the guy who's uh, in charge of the lake. And I was asking him, I was asking him if I could fish up in here, if anybody ever got to fish up in here. And he told me that he was going to let me fish in here. Uh, he says, he says, man, he says, you fish wherever you want to. So he says, I've been coming up here for ages and I've not caused anybody any trouble. I've not done anything but fish. Oh, come on. There we go. We got him. There we go. There we go. Come here, you. And I barely had him. I skin hooked him. Let me turn, turn that motor on. All right, well, he's all wrapped in my line. Uh, barely had him, but he took it and ran with it, so. I don't know. About a pound. Nice little fish. Nice little fish. That tells me we are in the right area. And there he goes. All right, good deal. Let's go to the next one. Got him. Ah, I got a nice one. Ha ha. Beautiful, beautiful color. Spinner bait. They're in here. Ooh, don't you lose your prize. It's about a two pound bass. Right there. Nice little bass on a spinner bait. We've caught some nice fish today. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's get right back to it, see if we can't replicate that. And while those were nice fish, that's not why I was there. I wanted giants. That's what we want, right? Virgin water, look how tasty. You know there's got to be some big girls in there somewhere. Nobody fishes this. Nobody can fish it. It's virgin water. So I decided, you know, like they say, no risk it, no biscuit. Let's see how skinny that little boat can get. And I started to head out to where it was really, really shallow. And man, I don't know if that was a good idea because I'll be honest, there was times there I did not know if I was going to be able to turn around to make it back. Take a look and you'll see exactly what I mean. I mean, that water is shallow, some kind of shallow through here. It may be knee deep. Yep, there's a stump. There's a stump right there. We're getting into a the danger zone here. This is where it gets dangerous. This is, uh, my trolling motor's not going to be of any use because it's too shallow, it's too mucky. Um, it's already kind of dug into the dirt a little bit here. And I don't want to really risk turning it on at this point because it's just going to, 
just going to dig into the uh, muck, and that's not what I want. I just, but I do. I mean, this is it's super, super gradual shallow back here. Super gradual shallow. This is pretty hairy right through here, kids. I mean, we are in some kind of we are in some kind of shallow water here. Moving backwards. Okay, well. Yeah, this is this is a little bit more treacherous than I had bargained for. This is this is a little bit more treacherous than I had bargained for, but I'm just trying to get over here to these fish. But we are in some super, super shallow water. Woo! You see that? That is what I'm trying to avoid. That is what we are in a minefield here. We are in the middle of a minefield. We're going to see if we can get out of here. I mean, this is... We're risking it, kids. We are risking it. This is why this place is restricted. We are really, really, really... Oh, crap. Okay. Talk about being in a hairy situation. I got to be honest, for more than a little bit, I was really starting to sweat, especially when my trolling motor cut out like that. It was constantly getting wrapped up in the pond weed. It was constantly dragging against the bottom. I finally just had to kick it up. It's a good thing I brought a paddle with me, which I normally do. It's something that I have as a backup just in case something happens. And I used it probably as much as I did the trolling motor today because I just couldn't couldn't run the trolling motor. It was just too mucky. It was too shallow. There was too much vegetation. It wasn't doing any good. And if I would have tried to force it, I would have just tore it up. So that's what I had to work with. And I don't know if I'm ever going to do that again. It was definitely a nerve wracking experience. And I never did find those big girls that were in there. Am I going to go back in there eventually? Oh yeah, one day. But I'm going to wait until the conditions are more conducive for the little boat. I mean, there's no way I'm going to get the bass buggy in there. It's probably better or something like a kayak, but even then, that's stretching it. That place back there is restricted for a reason. There's a reason why people aren't allowed to go back in there, because you are taking your own life into your hands, and I mean that seriously. With all the stumps that were in there, and I snagged, I bumped quite a few of them. I mean, I could have easily busted a hole in the bottom of my little plastic boat and lost everything, and as mucky as that water is, I would have sunk right down. I don't know if I could have gotten out. I don't know if I could have pulled my way up. I've been in water like that before. It just pulls you in. It just sucks you in. And movement is almost impossible. So, yeah, it's restricted for a reason. But eventually, when the weather is right, when the winds are in a better direction, obviously I'm going to have to go try it again. So there you have it. A white knuckle adventure, to be sure. I found out that maybe my boat doesn't need to go in some places. But... We did end up catching some fish. I can still hear those big girls calling to me though, so you know I'm gonna to have to put the little boat back in there just to satisfy my curiosity. Am I gonna be a little bit safer next time? I certainly hope so. I would like to wait for better weather, but we'll see. Next time I go, I think I'm gonna be a little bit better prepared. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.